everyone well I'm beginning to remember why I bought a pedal kayak so this is what's going on today my Mirage drive broke <laughs> I called Hobie they're shipping me a new spine as soon as possible but if I want to go fishing this is what I'm reduced to it's not bad. You can't go near as fast in my opinion, especially in a big kayak like this. If you had a smaller kayak, like a thinner one, you could really get after it. But Hey man, you want to go fishing, sometimes you got to improvise, right? So here I am. Doing a little paddling this morning. Back to my roots, old school. Today, on the water, leader tutorial. We're gonna go over everything. We're gonna go over the entire leader. We're gonna know, go over scenarios where you're gonna drag, where you're gonna use those uh, dragging leaders. And I'm gonna show you on the graph what we're looking for, and maybe even some Navionics maps. We'll go into that. Uh, big flats, humps, deep holes, pockets, that's all stuff you're going to be looking for. But do not discount just an open flat that has deep water close in the winter time like this. These fish are going to get on here and feed. So stay tuned guys, that's what we're going to do today. Alright guys, as promised, I'll show you how I do these leaders. water here. Yeah. Get my rod untangled here. Give it some slack. I can see what's going on. Freaking who knows what's going on over there, man. That face has always got something going on loud. dragon weights here. Get this thing rigged up. That's a three-way swivel right there, guys. You can see it that I've got a clip on. See that clip right there? This is a dragon weight. There's a video on my channel that shows you exactly how to make these. I made them myself. It's wire nuts. I think it's half-inch tubing and uh, some BBs. So it's half full with BBs, half full with air. There goes Reveille. <laughs> anyway, unclip it here. This is a three-way swivel, guys. Tied with some uni knots. I have a complete video on exactly how to put these together. But I'm just showing you here on the water I get it all going so your weights on there now you see that there make sure my weights as straight as I can get it sometimes they they curl up it's about two foot of a 50 pound big game right there that I use for a leader that goes to a chain swivel 
right there. Uni knots. They're simple to tie, they're quick, and they're strong. To that chain swivel. What a chain swivel does, it uh just allows that line to twist with the fish or even when you're dragging and pulling because you don't want your line to get all wadded up. So that's what that does. It just allows it to twist. All right, from there, got it about another foot of that 50 pound to this demon dragon. That is a secret weapon right there, guys. You hear that? That thing is just down there rattling the whole time you're dragging. And it just, it's like a thump, 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 thump every time you, uh, you pedal or paddle or a wave hits it just kind of just down there thumping 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 about six to eight inches off that i've got a snelled eight-aught mustad demon circle right there and i snell that so all the knots that i've been using on these you can use whatever knot you want i like a uni knot it's simple and quick and easy to tie from the hook i like to snell it that's a no knot snell right there i've got a uh a video on how to tie that I might show you today how to tie one they're they're really simple so that's it and I'll tell you a good way to make sure that your leader is not too long is hook the hook right here your the length of your leader from your hook to your weight should not be longer than from the end of your rod so I like it about the fourth thigh that's how I know that I've got it about the right length. So that's it, guys. I've got a seven foot rod here. It's seven foot, so that's probably a four foot leader maybe. And when that thing is, just take it off here for you. Give it some slack. When that thing is dragging on the bottom, there's the weight. It's dragging up in the water line. When that thing is dragging along the bottom right there, it makes it bounce up over structure, rocks, anything down there. You hardly ever get tangled. And if you do get tangled, you can paddle back on the other side of it and usually pull it free. But it's just, it's pulling along. And this part of the leader here is floating up in the water column. And that demon dragon's just doing its job, man sitting there bouncing making all kinds of noise and getting a big fish's attention so it's setting up in the water column but that's it three-way swivel to the do-it-yourself demon dra uh three-way swivel to the uh, dragon weight then about two foot a liter to a chain swivel then about another foot a liter to this demon dragon then six to eight inches to your circle hook whatever you choose to use i use a eight aught must add demon circle with a snell knot right there a no knot snell knot so that's it we'll get this one baited up and get it going and i'll show you guys oh yeah real quick we'll go over some gear uh i am a fan of abu garcia uh, used them since i was younger so there's a lot of different catfish reels you can get out there a lot of good ones this is just my preferred catfish reel this is a Ambassador 6500. Uh, this is a Pro Rocket Edition, the blacked out version. And this is a custom rod that Jamie built for me, the catnip. Now, if you don't want to go custom, there's a lot of different ones. This is also an Abu Garcia uh, 6500 C3. This is a catfish special right here. It's an older reel. I've had it for a while. Uh, this is a Mojo Cat. I really like this rod. I've got two of them. I like it so much. It's a uh, Mojo Cat. I think it's a medium heavy, but man, these things just handle big fish. Both these rods and reels, no problems, man. Anything that swims in these waters, you're going to be able to take out. I got uh, both these rods and reels set up. I'm going to show you some maps and some different stuff today that will hopefully help you out and get you started dragging, man. It's very simple. You cover a lot of water. That's what I really enjoy about it. And when you finally get on some fish you can just stay on them man keep dragging across it different ways but real quick uh, this is a catfish special uh, I've got it spooled up with 65 pound braid I do out of a kayak I do one rod with braid one rod with mono 
and the reason that is my lines are usually so close together in my opinion it gives them a little space you know they they run different through the water so you can run the braid out there long and then the mono shorter and you never hardly get tangled especially dragging but uh, I'll show you that in a minute once we get some wind and we can drag I'm gonna show you a little bit different way to drag this morning we have no wind out here uh, my Mirage drive is broke in case you got a paddle kayak I'm gonna show you how I set that up to drag so it's uh it's very simple and we'll do that like I said this this one here is uh, spooled up with 65 pound braid down to the leader and then my mono rig I've got 30 pound trialing big game and what I do guys on these reels these 6500s when I'm dragging or drifting I turn the drag up because a lot of times these kayaks have a lot of give they have a real they really have a lot of give to them so you want the drag as tight as it can go because it's going to give a little bit anyway once you get the fish hooked up and you're hooked up on him you can back off the drag you've seen me do it plenty of times and that's what I like about these uh these abus they got a good star drag on them right here and you you can just tighten or loosen if you need to but when I'm when I'm set up I usually turn the drag up almost all the way because this kayak has quite a bit of give to it I like a seven foot rod and the reason I like a seven foot rod is with these big fish you can get up here and go around the front of the kayak if they decide to go this way if they decide to go that way same thing offshore uh, you get a big fish on you can get around the front of the kayak with a smaller six foot rod or something like that it's going to be tough man and it just makes it a struggle so I don't like my rods too long either a lot of people will use seven and a half I don't need I don't think you need it I, I like seven I like to keep it as short as I can get it and manageable you know the longer you get your rod the more unwieldy and unmanageable it's going to be so we are set up here I will uh show you guys the graph as we're going let's get baited out and we'll start dragging all right guys I got the rods out so I told you I was going to show you a way to do this with the paddle uh, you can go back uh, forwards and do it as well but I like going backwards like this uh, I got my two rod holders set up here in the front and the lines out in front of me so I can watch them and I'm just paddling real slow and easy, keeping it about 0.35 and working this ledge. Now the wind is picking up a little at my back. We're going to have to adjust for that. But we'll be just fine. If you look at my graph here, I'll show you here in a second. We're just working this hump. I'm going to pull it up and show you how I'm working around it here. But we're keeping it about 0.35 on the speed. Maybe a little less even. Water's 49 degrees, almost 50 degrees. So the wind's a little bit at our back, so it's kind of making it a little bit difficult. If that wind picks up anymore, we won't have to do this. We can just drift. So the wind is a good thing. But if you don't have any wind, you can still get it done. Just like this. We have 18 foot of water right now, which is perfect. We're just going to work this ledge. Working around the, uh, the outside of this hump here. Got a couple of big baits on. I showed you how we set up those, uh, those leaders. Pretty simple. Nothing take a rocket scientist to figure it out get my graph here and uh, I'll get the camera out and show you guys what I'm looking at here in a second this is it I've got two rod holders in the front both rods out in front of me and I'm just working backwards and I can sit here with the paddle in my lap if I get a fish I can reach up and grab either rod holder 
and that's what we're doing right now because there's little or no wind. <sighs> Man, I think it's a better fish than I thought. Feels pretty good, guys. So you just lay your paddle in your lap while you're fighting these fish. Like I said, there's you can go around the front of the kayak if you need to. He's trying to be tricky down here. There he is. <laughs> it's a better fish than I thought it was. Oh yeah. It's a good one, guys. <laughs> All right. There's some big fish out today. Let me see if I can get him in here and get him landed so you guys can take a look. Come here. That camera stuff. That's the only bad thing about having a paddle in the way. It's in the way. <laughs> Alright, come here. Come here, you. All right, I got him. So, when you've got your paddle in the way, you kind of just lay it in your lap right here. Just one more thing in the way. But, there you go. Ooh, he was barely, he wasn't hooked real good. Oh, there we go, guys. That's a good blue to start off the morning right there. <laughs> Uh, yeah so like I said you don't necessarily have to have a mirage drive get get my my uh, I like to keep these uh, rod holders free so I can stick it up in there but that is it look at that guys that is a toad <laughs> it's a good fish guys a good fish to start off the morning right there thank you so much mr blue cat we will reel in the lines get everything set back up oh you got me all slimy buddy Hard takedown, guys. Oh, leave this fish is running. He's kind of messing me all up into everything. <laughs> nice fat fish. Fun. You can see this mud on them, guys, where they've been setting down in the mud. I don't know if you can see it on that side, but he's he's got it all over this side of him where he's been sitting down in that mud down there so this is two days of fishing I probably could have split it up into two videos because this video ran kind of long but I really wanted to focus on leaders today to show you guys that on the water I've had requests people asking me what kind of leader I use of course I have it in the DIY section but this will show you on the water also in this video I wanted to go over some graphs and what that entails, what you're looking for. I use Navionics. It's the app that I use personally, but there's a lot of different apps out there. I am going to pull up a printed graph of one of my favorite spots. I'm going to show you which way the wind is blowing, about what the water temperature is, which direction you want to run or directions, because there's more than one way to skin a cat. And I'll show you when you see this... Uh, clip of this map that I have different ways that you can run this in different winds I didn't put all of the fish in here unfortunately it was just it was making the video way too long so I'll just go through some of the better ones that I caught they deserve to be on YouTube so we'll give them their their uh, 15 seconds of fame and make sure we put them in here
if you like seeing these graphs and some of these tactics, make sure you guys uh, let me know in the comment section of this video. And I'll keep doing it. I'll do it for different lakes and uh, we'll go from there. Make sure you like these videos, guys. It seems to help with YouTube. If you can, pass around the word and get others to subscribe. I really appreciate your support. Some pins that'll work. This is north. Like I said, point it up that way. This is going to be a big hump right here that drops off to a deep hole. I've showed you that in the past. That's super deep water for work. Probably the deepest in the lake. The wind is blowing this direction from the southeast on this day. So what you want to do is position your boat or kayak where you come across this hole. Whatever direction the wind is blowing. On this day is blowing from the southeast. So I like to come right at the base of so this is basically right here. All this is a big hill. Just a big mound that comes up. And this is the deepest part of it. It's like a hole at the bottom of it. Might have been an old pond. Who knows what it is. But I try to set my kayak up where I drift across this deep hole. And then catch the base of this ridge. Because these fish... They'll travel the base of this ridge. Running shad up and stuff like that. And one of the reasons that blue cats are so predictable this time of year is shad. Shad like to be comfortable this time of year. They, they don't like water fluctuations, so they go as deep as they can most of the time because that's where the water is most stable. So if you look for the deepest hole with a ridge, a channel, or something like that around it, that's where your blue cats are going to be. Now you say like the wind was blowing from the southwest same thing you just position your kayak over here where you'll catch part of this hump and part of this don't discount the fact that these fish here will often move up the ridge especially in these these spots here like that it's low spots in the mound where it's going up so these fish will often move up in these mounds and if you drift across that, you can do pretty good as well. But my favorite part is right along this ridge because it seems like a highway for the fish to travel on this particular hump. Again, I'm going to show you guys a leader. There's the uh, piece of bait on an ADOT Mustad Demon Circle. Goes up to this Demon Dragon right there. I got a perch colored one. They make them in different colors. Then a chain swivel. What that does is allow it to spin. Then you come on up here to a three-way swivel with a clip. And that's where your uh, your weight goes. Like I said, I show how I made all this stuff in another leader video. I've got it on the DIY if you want to see a more detailed deal on or a more detailed leader video, I've got them uh, in my DIY section. Like I said, it's about four foot long. So, the hook right there is the reel. You can almost measure to the fourth, foot between the third and fourth thigh right in there somewhere. That's about how long it needs to be, the whole thing. Hope you guys found this video helpful. Maybe I'll make it back to the rim. Jesus. My arms are smoked after two days of this. I get my workout along with my catfishing here. Anyway, see you guys in the next one. Killer B out.